Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam and today I am going to be doing a tabletop tag. Now, originally this started with Jenna Rose, who is the creator of the Board Game Garden YouTube channel, which if you have not went and followed her channel, please go do so. I've got a link down in the description below. She was the one who actually started this, where essentially it's just having uh, people on the creation space just sharing more about them. And then they're going to be tagging other creators and then those those creators are also going to share about themselves and eventually this little wing of everybody sharing has led to me uh, directly from my buddy Tim. So if you have not followed Tim, you got to follow Tim. Tim's my other half. Come on. You, you should already be following him. We have a discord channel together. Things are getting pretty serious. So we're going to be going through these questions together. So I'm going to pull out my phone. I've got my list here. And the first question is name, age and location. Uh, my name is Samuel William Smith, the most basic name on the planet. My age is that I just turned 25 here in June and location. I live here in the Seattle, Washington area. I enjoy where I'm at. Uh, it's obviously why I'm drinking coffee. It's literally raining outside right now and it's been raining for the past couple of days. It's, it's beautiful out here. Now, favorite childhood board game is the next question. And it's kind of it's kind of tricky because I don't really remember which one I started loving first, but it's got to be between either chess or Stratego. Um, I love both of these games still to this day. In fact, I need to buy a new Stratego set because I've been telling Katie that we need to be playing a game of Stratego because uh, I think she would actually really like it. She's not a super huge fan of chess, but Stratego, I think she would like a lot. When did I first get into the hobby is kind of a complicated question, mostly because I feel like I, I knew that I was obsessed with board games after playing Settlers of Catan when I was like probably 11 years old. Um, but besides that, I don't think I really got into the greater hobby probably in 2016 when I was around 18 years old, um, because that's when I was buying a lot of board games um, and actually, you know, like getting stuff for myself, kind of investing in the hobby a little bit more because, you know, when you're younger, you know, you really can't buy that much. So I pretty much just ask for board games for every one of my Christmases. So if we consider that, then sure. Um, but if not, then probably 2016. The first board game I purchased. See, now here's the thing, because there was a lot of games that I got my parents to purchase for me uh, <laughs> growing up throughout the years. So the first board game that I purchased, um, I think it was Small World. Now that I think about it, I think it was Small World. Uh, because one of the things is I actually loved war games. Um, Risk <laughs> was like the only war game I ever knew about. And when I was reading the pitch for Small World, it kind of seemed like a really cool, wacky uh, Risk, actually. And I liked the fact that there was all these special powers and, and complex combinations. I was really excited uh, to get Small World to the table. And I believe that was the first board game that I ever bought. Is there a game that you bought in the past that I wouldn't buy now. Okay, there is there's tons of games that I bought in the past that I wouldn't buy now. Um, but the first one that I'm probably going to mention would probably be Ticket to Ride. And it's not because I'm like a hater on the game or anything, but it was one of those games that I think I remember when I was first joining the hobby. It was like Ticket to Ride, you know, Settlers of Catan, like all these games, Small World even, all these games are like staple games that everybody loves. And so I just assumed that because everybody loves it, that the game would be for me. Well, something that you learn when you're in this hobby is that there are tons of games out there that are not for you, that you might not really enjoy that much. For me, Ticket to Ride is just a little bit too simple and it just wasn't something that I think that I, I mean, I still even have it in my collection, which is the funny thing, but I really ought to donate it because yeah, I just don't really enjoy the game that much and I, and I wouldn't have bought it if I had known. That's same with a lot of early buys. Actually, I bought primarily based on what was really, really popular in that time. And because of that, I found a lot of games that now end up taking space.
Do I have any hobbies outside of board games? Well, I can show you a couple actually. Here, come with me. That was just, I, I like fake got up for the transition so that it's gonna smoothly transition over somewhere else. I like to play piano. Uh, that's definitely something that I really enjoy doing. Uh, sometimes I'll write music. Sometimes I'll just watch YouTube videos till I get tired and try to learn a new song or a new one. If you can guess this song that I'm playing here, I'll love you forever. Um, and then also I really like to sing and rap once in a while, maybe do some recordings and such. Um, I usually do that in here just for myself and my own fun. Once there was a night beneath a moonless sky, too dark to see a thing, too dark to even try. Um, and then also I, once in a while, I'll get back into, you know, video gaming. I actually started off being a huge nerd because I used to play uh, Age of Empires. That was like the game of all. I still love that game. I still play it, um, but I definitely don't play games as much as I used to. I, I kind of go through these moments of being really, really obsessed with video games and it'll be like a month's time and then I'll, I'll just go back to, to normal life. <laughs> Another one that I would say is a really good hobby is, uh, oh, I do, I do art. I always forget about that, mostly because I just kind of toned down a lot on the artwork that I do, but I really want to do more art. I usually do it as like a relaxer. Uh, so same with like piano, I usually do that to relax myself. Um, art is the same way for me and I figured out really quickly that I really can't do art for other people. It is just a very personal thing that I do for myself. Okay, so breakthrough game. Okay, so this might be, I would say like the game that like propelled, um, you know what, I think I think this is a perfect time to talk about Root because I think everybody expected me to eventually bring up Root in this video. But I think that Root was my breakthrough game in the way that I was in the hobby before, but Root is what brought me to the wider hobby community. At first it was just playing games, you know, with my family, with my friends, introducing them. But when I got Root, for the first time and I played it. That's what made me decide to start this channel. And that's what brought me into this wider community of board game content creation and meeting some amazing people, awesome board game content creators. Root still stands to be my favorite game of all time. So I had to find a way to get it in there. I think that's probably my breakthrough game for sure. Do I have any new games purchased? Sadly, I always have games purchased. I guess it's not sadly, but um, shit. I just opened up this one, but this is going to be the new unmatched Jurassic Park set with T-Rex and Dr. Sattler, I think is her name. Um, yeah, this is cool. Uh, the freaking T-Rex is huge in this set. Um, and then I'm not going to grab the other one, but it's you, you can see it behind me. But I recently got Onk. This one right here. Um, I've played it a couple times and I will leave it at that. Do I have a favorite player count? So the easy answer would be two player just because that's primarily what I do. And honestly, you know what, just to, just to, just to talk about two player mode for a second, I think that people are way too hard on two player mode. Like, especially with like in, in terms of like area control games of like, oh no, no, but that's not how the game was meant to be played. Like people tell me this all the time, you know, just to get into a little rant here. People tell me this all the time. They're saying, you can't play Root at two player. It, Root is a, a, a massive multiplayer game. You have to play with like four people. Like that's how you play the game. You can't play, uh, you know, Dune with two players. You know, you can't play Ankh with two players. You know, that's not the experience that you're gonna get. You can't play Wonderland's War with two players. Well, you know what I say to that is, if there's a two-player mode, 
you can play whatever the heck you want. You can play it at two players. And here's the thing is that oftentimes what I find is that a game that does have a two player mode and also a five player mode, they're very different games. And you know what? One that is a lot shorter is going to be that two player mode and one that's a lot longer is usually going to be that five player mode. And this is something where me and Katie feel a little bit spoiled sometimes because honestly, the Wonderlands War two player mode is really, really solid. And the game is super fun at higher player counts, but it does last a little bit longer. So it's just like a tug and pull, but we love it at two player. We also like Rooted two player. We also like Ankh at two player. Um, so just to combat two player a little bit with like the games that I usually enjoy, just let people play whatever they want at the player count that they enjoy. I think that's just what I was trying to get there. But anyways, two player count, but if not two player, probably four player. Maybe, you know, nope, nope, it's five, it's five. It's gotta be five for me, because I think five player root is probably my favorite player count for root if I'm doing a group game, so it's gotta be five. A mechanism that I do not like or that I am not good at. Well, I've got, I've got a couple. Um, first of all, like tile laying placement games, like, you know, when we're getting like the calicos or the, uh, that little button, the button game. I forgot the button game's name. Oh, darn it. Somebody's going to comment the button, the button game. Um, but yeah, that one, I'm really bad at those. I don't think I don't enjoy them. I think I do enjoy them. I just don't think that my brain like operates in that way. Um, and in the same vein, roll and writes, I'm not a huge fan of, I wouldn't say I'm bad at them. I just don't really enjoy them that much. Um, I don't know what it is. I, I just don't think that I, I don't know. I have so much love for the component aspect of board gaming. Um, the tactile feel of the pieces and everything that goes into making the product that it's really tough for me to play a, a roll and write and enjoy it because I feel like I'm just writing on a piece of paper. Um, and so I don't really get immersed in that theme. I don't like having to erase and stuff. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. It's a weird thing. I know Jenna, the person who started the whole thing, she likes roll and write. So I'm sorry, Jenna, I failed you. I've also failed Kavre. They love roll and writes. I failed the board game community, haven't I? Read the rule book or watch the video. Oh boy. Okay. So <laughs> I literally just have like these <laughs> chilling around right here. Um, I want to play Scythe again. I really like this game. So I pulled out the rule book. Um, and then also, you know, a little light reading, you know, in the afternoon. A little late reading in the afternoon. So, you know, I also brought the Law of Root. I like reading through the Law of Root because this is one game that I never want to forget a rule of. And I love, 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 love knowing all the little rules in here. It's just so fun to read. And, you know, let's just pop up the book, go to one of the rules and see if we can find one of the exact numbers. Okay. 15.2.2 way stations. You have three way stations. Each way station shows one relic type on its front and another relic type on its back. I just like, you know, like eventually I want to learn all of those. Like 14.7.3 is jubilant. I just love how Roots Rulebook is laid out. But rule books in general, I love reading rule books. In fact, I will read the rule book two to three times. Um, and that will be spread across. There, there's usually a video dabbled in between just to kind of watch. Um, I don't need the video, but I do like to have it just to kind of supplement that learning experience. But usually I'll like read the rule book once or twice, then watch a video, then read the rule book one more time. And then after that whole deal, uh, then I'll, I'll be ready to teach and play the game and hopefully be able to answer any questions without referencing that rule book. That's usually the goal, but stuff happens, man. I'm usually pretty much the primary person that learns all the games, teaches all the games. So, you know, there's only so much this brain can handle. But yeah, so I think it all comes down to read the rule book. Favorite snack while playing board games. I mean, if <laughs> if coffee is a snack, it's got to be coffee, but I don't think that's going to pass. But I'm going to take a drink really quick. So for a snack, I'm 
I'm not usually really a sweets person. I'm more of a salty type. So like I really, really like pretzels or maybe barbecue chips. Popcorn's a good vibe. But the other thing about that is that I don't really like getting my cards or anything or like the components all messy. So I'm really like sketched out sometimes about that, but I pretty much leave all my stuff. So I guess in that case, I'm pretty okay. And I mean, everybody kind of knows I'm a real weird about like food and stuff. I'm okay. Like if, if you're eating it, I'm not going to judge you, but it's just like respect the pieces. Like, you know, don't get all the crumbs all over, you know, unless it's like some party game where I don't really care about the components that much. Gosh, you know, this whole table talk tag, I feel like I would be annoyed with myself if I wasn't myself. I actually think I'm annoyed with myself just as is. <laughs> Have I ever been to a board game convention? I've been to one board game convention and that was Dice Tower West. And it was, oh, it was an amazing experience. I got to meet just some of the people that mean so much to me, people that I had interacted with before and that I really didn't think I would ever meet in person. And the moment that I met these people, it was like they were just family. Also meeting fans of the channel, uh, amazing people that would just come up and be like, I love the, what you're doing. I mean, that was just, it was such an encouraging experience for me uh, as a creator. And I want to go to more for sure. Um, amazing people in this hobby. Couple shout outs, got, it, got to do a couple shout outs. Um, Foster the Meeple. I love you both. Jeff and Jamie are the sweetest people. Um, they're too sweet for this world, except for maybe Jeff. He's not, he's not that sweet, but, but Jamie's very sweet, but Jeff is, Jeff's cute. So he's got that going for him. And then, uh, Tim Chuan, obviously, you know, my other half, he was obviously at D Dice Tower West. We got to hang out a whole day together. Um, he's just, he's the best. Love that man. Uh, Kavre, Ilya and Tyler, amazing human beings. Love them to death. Raina and Phil from One Minute Board Games. I loved meeting them, loved playing some games. I mean, oh, I need to go back to a convention. I want to go to PAX Unplugged. Um, I'm not sure though. I, I, I want to go to more. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, I've been to one. Dice Tower West. Games I'm looking forward to. I've got a few. Actually, you know what? Let me check my... Kickstarter. I will say right off the bat that a game that I'm really looking forward to has got to be Septima. Uh, Septima is like that kind of new uh, witch themed game from Mind Clash Games. I think it just kind of hits all the bells for me. Um, and I'm really, really excited about it. Also very excited to see that there's no miniatures in it. That's wonderful. Um, another game I'm really excited for is going to be Arcs. So stoked for that. Um, Voidfall, another game by Mind Clash. It's like their 4X space game. Um, probably another game that I'm really, oh, I think I'm getting it October would be John Company second edition. That's by the same designer as Root. Um, and it's the second in his kind of historical board game series. First he did Pax Pamir, now John Company. And I'm just really excited to receive my copy. I think it's a beautiful game. I think it's gonna be a wonderful experience. So there's a couple games that I am looking forward to right now. What is my favorite thing about the hobby? I think, okay, so there's two things. The first one and most obvious one would be the people and the relationships. Um, that's a very basic and obvious answer, I think, for me, but it, the the board game hobby, the, the outer community has really changed um, a lot of my life. Meeting those people at Dice Tower West and communicating with them actively and daily. I mean, these people are people that I think will be in my life forever. And that just makes me so humbled. Um, it's just a great experience. Another thing though, that I think I love about the hobby is that board games for me, give me a way to socially, um, that I, I guess to be social without being as awkward. I'm a super introverted person by nature. Like if I could choose, I would just stay in my home all the time and never leave. And so when I go to a social event, I get very, very heavy waves of anxiety. And a board game for me allows me to have something that I can connect to while doing the social activity. Board game pet peeves. Okay. 
Here's a couple pet peeves, I'll just name them in a lineup. First one is reviewers that review games don't play the game right and then review it like what they're saying is fact. Um, reviewers that review games, they play it once and they're mentioning problems that really would only come up on your first time playing. Reviewers that review games a couple times, um, going into the game knowing that they're not going to like it because of a very specific mechanic, and then saying that the game is terrible because of that mechanic, even though that's a very subjective thing. Um, but yeah, I'll stop picking on reviewers. Those are my those are my content creation <laughs> biggest uh, pet peeves. Uh, so, what is some pet peeves though that are like around the table? Oh gosh, I don't know. That's tough. That's tough. Um, probably non-unique colors. Um, I really. I don't like when board games have like blue, yellow, green, red. I like when board games like kind of push the boundaries of player colors. For example, Root, the base game is really nice. They've got green, blue, orange, and white. Um, Dragoon, it's a really beautiful game. They have just like off versions of every color and then they also have a cream instead of a white. So it's like cream, like a nice red, like a mustard, um, and then just like a light teal. So when you have like different colors for the player colors, I really, really enjoy that. So what player color do I pick most often? I think it's gotta be orange. Um, if orange is available, I am down with the orange. I love orange as a player color. Um, if not orange, I really like like kind of raspberry, like a purple reddish color. I mean, it's very specific, but I really like that color. So if I saw that, I would, I would definitely pick that color first. What is a theme that draws me into board games? So I'm actually kind of in the middle of switching up the whole setup, as you can see here. And one thing that I realized is that I like a couple of big umbrella themes. So one would be historical. Uh, so stuff that would happen like uh, in, in the past, like more ancient history. I don't like modern, more modern history, like World War uh, time period. No, um, more like medieval, um, ancient, maybe the early 1400s, like all of that kind of stuff really gets me. Historical themes. Um, the other one would be whimsical fantasy settings such as um, maybe like fairy tales as well could be put in there. Uh, storybook, I guess, kind of is a good keyword you know, Root, Everdell, Grim Forest, that kind of vibe. I think those games are just, oh, I mean, if I see that, I'm immediately drawn to it. Wonderland's War, oh my word, give me Alice in Wonderland. So like th these really whimsical, magical settings, you know, give me some fairies, some, some woodlands, some magic. So definitely, those are the kind of the two themes that really get me every time. So what are some other people that I would like to see do this challenge? Well, I've got a couple, I got a couple. Um, the first one would be Chris George from Room and Board. Been watching his content a lot and I absolutely love it. I wanna learn more about you, man. So um, put, putting you in this tag, we'll see We'll see if that ever happens. Um, and then, you know, obviously no pressure, but I'll, I'll be waiting for the upload, <laughs> but no pressure. Um, and then, Okay, you know what? I would also like to see Monique and Naveen. I don't think they've done it yet. They might have, but Monique and Naveen, if you haven't done it yet, would love to see you do it. I, I, mean, I need to go check and catch up on some uploads. You guys upload a lot, okay? Um, but I would like to see that. So Monique and Naveen from Before You Play. Um, hmm. You know whose life is very, very interesting is actually Daniel Radcliffe from Board Game Co. It's, it's Alex. It's Alex Radcliffe. That was a good joke, wasn't it? No, it really wasn't that good. Um, I want I want him to do the board game tag. I don't know if he will, but I'd be interested to see it if he did. I'm intrigued by your life. Well, guys, that is it for the board game tag. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, 
please drop a like. The content that is usually on this channel is not usually this kind of stuff. I usually do like strategy content, really, really weird niche stuff about games that I love. I don't cover a lot of games, but I'm very passionate about the games that I do cover. So if you want to stick around here, please do. I would appreciate it. Thanks again to Jenna Rose who started this whole table talk tag. I think it was a really, really great idea. And Tim, thanks for tagging me, brother. I love you. All right, peace.